our first behavioral model meeting. Um, I, I'm displaying my screen here, and if I remember correctly, last time um, we were mostly all waiting on 193, which seems to have been approved, merged, etc. And so I was wondering um, if everyone has become able to move forward now uh, with their items that were waiting on 193. Yeah, and 187, I guess, was supposed to be merged as well. 197, okay. It's 87. <clears throat> 187? I think that one also got, let me take a peek here. Yeah, that's much this way. Oh, it is? Okay, great. And is there anyone on the call who needs um, an explanation of what 193 was or anything, or are we all on the same page? We're good. Okay, so uh, so this one here is merged, and this one. And Marion, thanks for doing that. For for one ninety three. Um. So did anyone want to pick up with their PRs for for the week? There are PRs anyone wanted to discuss for behavioral model? I had uh, 207. This is Nikesh. Okay, 207. Do you want me to display it? Uh, yeah, we want it quickly. Yeah, it's a very small change. Okay, let me do that. And go ahead. Yeah, so basically the change is to add uh, the default drop action to the VIP entry and the PA validation tables. Um, previously, these tables only had uh, two actions and no parameters. So we were not able to add the default, uh, default only tag to the deny action. Uh, because that would uh, <clears throat> that would not generate any any parameters at all in the sci. There, there would be no sci attributes generated. So change the sci auto generation tool to uh, kind of just have the uh, permit action alone and remove the deny action if the default drop default only tag is set. So with this now we are able to add the default only tag to the deny actions. So there's essentially what action attribute is just that uh, the only choice left is permit. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, so, that, that's all. So is that a, okay? You think it's okay to approve and merge, or okay, you'll take a look at it later, or Marion? No, it's, uh, uh, I, I will approve right now. It can okay. be. Mario, is there any interaction with uh, PR201, which is passing now? And what do we want to do about that one? Split side. There was a lot of action on this one over the last day and a half. I saw a lot of emails on it. Oh, yeah. Mario was, I'm busy. was cr cranking on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yeah, so it includes a few things besides the uh, main goal, besides just renaming APIs for, to be compatible with uh, Sonic software. Um, it fixes the make file, the auto generation of the utils, so it does not have any hard coded API names, etc. etc. Um, yeah, so I don't think any uh, anything will uh, anything from the 207 will affect this one, but probably I'll just rerun uh, the pipeline anyway. So 
if anyone wants to take a look because as i said it's got a few infrastructure changes um, yeah I'm, i'll play with that today i want to check out the auto generation and, and um you know see how you replace the hard code so i'll play with that later i'm glad you got to that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. probably awesome. this afternoon that's good that's a good uh that's a real good addition It, will there be any impact uh, or let's say uh, any collision with what uh, Mukesh just did or are they kind of in orthogonal? Are they not? As I said, 99% uh, no, because Mukesh's change is related to enum, which is the value for attribute. My changes are in the scope of uh, API structure name, so they shouldn't intersect. Awesome. Did anyone else have a PR they wanted to cover? And John, you joined a little bit later. Did you have any questions on what we just covered? Uh, I don't. Okay, cool. Yeah, we just we were waiting on 193, which was a outbound pipeline packet test. We merged it and we merged 187. It was default drop support for P4 table miss, blah, blah, blah. So just those couple of things. And then Marion did a lot of work on 201. So that's what we went through. Um, so then we have behavioral model project here, which is view, we'll do a view by status here. And so we did add a few things to the backlog here. Um, if, if anyone wants to pick things up, we had a couple of, these were the, actually we made a lot of progress here on these P4 bugs down at the bottom. So Mukesh was 147, was that done now? Yeah, this, <clears throat> this last pier was the last piece. Uh, once that is merged, we can close this. Okay, so we're the waiting four, for a merge. 207. Yeah, I'll close it once 207 is finished. You'll close this once 207 is done? Just, mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just merge 207. Okay. Anyone have okay. any uh, objections or anyone still wants to look at it? Because it's fairly simple. Yeah, this, yeah, this is. Okay, great. So then, so then you can close that one for me. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's I'll close. Do that. Yeah, I'll close it right there. Okay, cool. Awesome. And then that'll move into the done category. And then um, there's a lot of in progress here um, for the. Are we still waiting on a uh, group or resource to come back for um, for connection tracking or simulator development, that kind of thing? Uh, no, there, there's work in progress. There, um, I am integrating the changes. I wasn't working on that because I had mm -hmm. all the issues with the Sci APIs. Yes, uh, exactly. Yeah, I remember. We integrate the code into... Um, into our forks, uh, so it will need changes to the Docker files, um, basically to, to the Docker themselves, because we are using uh, public ones for uh, the compiler. So right now the uh, the work is ongoing. The number eighteen is still ongoing. Then uh, number eighteen, no, there was another one, not the okay. simulator. Filer. I haven't integrated that yet. Yeah. We'll check back on this then. Um, check back next week, maybe? Or a week mm -hmm. after? Next week? Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Great. Then, um, Chris, are we done with this one? This no, we're waiting on Scythe Thrift server integration into BMB2. No, that's that's been done. 
It's done. Okay, I'm gonna move this. Long time ago. Yeah, it's good to, good there to should keep be. up on this stuff. Okay, great. And then this one here, Mukesh, uh, ingress port should equal egress port. No, that's done as well. Awesome. Checking them all. Yeah, correct is done. Which one? 21. 21. Okay, awesome. Thanks. You guys are helping me out here. 22. About improved drop handling. I think Mukesh has done that as well. Mukesh, am I right? Yeah, yeah that, that was 22, right? In the case 21 now. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Um, okay. So these, uh, these are the ones at the top that were just kind of waiting on assignment. If there's, um, you know, I mean, I mean, some of these have to wait, like writing APIs for state machine testing. Obviously, we have to wait on that one and counters. We need to figure out what we're counting before we start, you know, writing counters, that kind of thing. Uh, Mario, Mario from Pensando AMD added these two here, which um, will be good ones to take on. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have for this week. Anyone have Q&A or anything they want to specifically talk about or Gerald or anything? Um, can I share a couple things? Oh, please, yeah. Okay, so just just a few things. Uh, I'll, I'll actually uh, take the screen over. Okay. So, um, thank you. See. You. And thanks everyone for doing all this stuff um, and helping me close all these. Thank you. So I, I mentioned yesterday um, a couple of PRs which I'd like to move forward soon. This is just documentation mainly. Th this one. It's now going to be blocking me from um, subsequent, let's say, Docker work. And also, Marin, the work you're doing with BMB2 eventually will have to coordinate right, all these Docker files and images and sort things out. Um, so I, I meant to try your 202 today. I've got my environment back, so I will try it as well. Great, great. Just a few victims or guinea pigs to try it out to make sure I didn't um miss something critical because the whole point of this is to finally fix this technical debt um and then i'm working on i mentioned yesterday briefly about um <clears throat> using the acr repository for our images instead of my docker hub and i've actually um got a branch and this branch is under azure dash and i'll explain why it's called Publish Docker ACR, uh, Publish Dockers to ACR. I've actually got it working, apparently, uh, at least uh, in my test, where I have new GitHub action commands. There's a whole series of these, but the final step is what's important. I'm pushing Docker to Sonic Dash Azure CR Container Registry .io. This was created for us by Microsoft IT people. Christina's um, help, and I'm now pushing all these images to Sonic Dash ACR, and I can use them to build from. So I'm going to do some more refinement of this. But once we do this, um, then we'll have to do I'll have to do a big uh, merge so that all the new images are pulled from ACR, and the result will be the next time people use all that merge code. They'll have to do a one time pull of all these new images because they have a new repo name. Even if they're the same image, they'll have a new repo name in their path. So you'll be pulling those to your um, environment. But so far, it's gone surprisingly easy. All I had to do is find the right piece of code to steal from another place and, hmm. you know, put it in the right place and it logs me into ACR. Otherwise, it's a standard GitHub action file. So this is um, very encouraging for me. And and so, you know, with this going on, the Docker permissions, um, once that's merged, I'll have to use those images instead of these older ones. And I have to come up with a workflow to do this. One thing I, I said a moment ago was I'm doing this in a branch off of Azure. I'm not doing it in a fork. The reason is I can't publish images to ACR without credentials. And the credentials are stored as secrets in the Azure Dash repo. I don't even have access to them. Christina stored them. You know, as part of this, she's copied the secrets into a 
the secret place that only the admin can access. So all I can do is use substitution variables to get those secrets to log into ACR. And these are only accessible when you're running inside a branch in the actual dash repo. All that means is it's kind of a it's kind of a special once in a while thing to do is to create a branch and push push new images to ACR. But that's the workflow. You know, you can't just do a fork and push things to ACR unless you have account access. So I need to really figure out the workflow here, go through it a few times, maybe get someone to try it also who acts in the in the let's say as a maintainer. So this will be kind of a maintainer activity, and it would be good to have a few people who act as maintainers to go through this with me in these trial phases and we work out the kinks. It, I shouldn't be the only person who knows how to do this. We don't want single points of failure, right? We want multiple people who can handle this. So I'll try to work it out. I'll try to document it. We'll go through some um, practice runs together and then, you know, um, you know start using it. Does that sound like a plan? Right. There's probably a lot there, but once I document it, um, I think it'll be clear. You just can't push, you know, images willy nilly to a Docker registry. You have to have account access. And that's why I've been doing it so far to my own Docker hub. And it's been occasional, um, but we need to make this, you know, just a, a joint kind of activity now. Yeah, first of all, you know, Chris, you know, really thank you for taking the initiative to, to do this thing. This is a lot of work and, and uh, you know, I appreciate you doing it. I'm sure community will also appreciate you doing it. So thank you so much. And if Thanks. you need guinea pigs and then if you need to, me to, you know, I can try and yeah. help you out in terms of, you know, doing all the testing and so forth. Right? Great. I had, I had you in mind because you've spoken up about these kinds of things in the past when you found um, room for improvement, like the doc, uh, the make file perms and all that. That was you kind of pushed me over finally getting rid of that technical debt. And I thank you for that. And this is fun anyway. I get to learn some new things along the way. I'm not a I'm not a CI wizard. I'm learning this as I go. Um, so anyway, yeah. thank we, we are all we yeah yeah absolutely you know and we are we all are learning along the way. And I think yeah. it's a lot of fun learning new things. So I, I'm I'm enjoying it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's why I think this project's cool. There touches like about 50 different domains. And, uh, you know, to me, that's fun. It's like playing with Tinker Toys. <laughs> For anyone um, old enough to know what those of, are. <laughs> speaking of fun, I've been watching uh, P4 YouTube videos from um, Andy Fingerhut's um, teammates trying to learn new things there. So, yeah, it's been fun. Cool. And um, Hannah, to your point on this, um, you posted um, this make run all test fails, this issue 205. And I, I spent some time this morning getting to the bottom of it. And I think I know what's happening. And I have a, a quick workaround, which um, I just put this up. And I'll, um, just before this meeting. And so I have a little homework to do to figure out the true root cause. But what happens is when you do make deploy ICTSC right after you've made the VEs, there's a one time flurry of IPv6 packets on the VEs. I don't know why. So I need to work with our teams to figure this out. Um, but I've got a way to reproduce it. And you know, you can take a look at this. Uh, Mukesh and, and Hanif and I have been having a dialogue on this. And so I, I did some investigating. You could take a look at that. And if you just do a little experiment and, and confirm that. The quick workaround was just just deleting. All you have to do is delete this from one make target. It should stop the problem. Um, also, Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So after running the deploy, you see the uh, disable IPv6 setting is off. So it's gotten enabled now. Oh, you're saying running this re-enables things? Yes. That's interesting. You know, it might actually be a, a like a side effect of Docker Compose. I, I don't know what's causing it, so that's why I have to go to dig down to the next level and probably get some people uh, more experienced in this. But I finally they have a way to reproduce this very simply, um, I think. But that's that's good information too. Um, so anyway, we're working on this. It, it's it seems like it's a 
it only happens once. So if you reran the test, Anna, it probably would pass. Okay, uh, yeah, let me let me try that. You know, um, yeah. definitely I'll I'll give it a shot. And then thank you so much for uh, helping to root cause this issue. Um, both you and Mukesh have been pretty helpful. And then I, you know, um, I'll definitely give it a shot for whatever the suggestions you have. Awesome. We'll we'll go over the hump. Definitely. All right. Good. Chris, you may be aware of that there's some syscontrol Linux commands when you create virtual ethernets that yeah. by default Linux enables certain kind of IPv6 control packets to be generated across them. I put in chat a, some commands okay. that can disable those. I don't, but that might not be the v6 packets you're seeing. So, yeah, there's we are, there already is a lot of that going on disables, and it didn't seem to work. Something happens afterwards. These are like, you know, solicitation messages and things like that. But may we. Have, for example, there's a lot of this already, but oh, I think okay. we're finding oh, those are the commands that I was I was uh, uh, linking you to. So if you're already using those, then I don't know what 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 you're seeing. Yeah, it's it's been an ongoing saga. Um, so we're getting closer. <laughs> Perhaps they're getting forwarded for some other VE through the device to that interface. <laughs> That's the one thing about these tests is they're not totally isolated from your host, right? If they're running yeah. in a VM, we might have more control, but containers are rock and VMs are kind of yep. say, hefty. We want, we want slender and slim. All right. I, uh, so, thanks. yeah, just well, glad, glad, glad you already know about that. So I my, yeah. my uh, knowledge is spent there. <laughs> I spent hours dig, uh, Googling for all these kinds of tricks and and they didn't they didn't all work. I haven't found the magic wand yet. Anyway, that's that's all I wanted to share. Thanks, everyone. Um, so I guess the last thing would be then um, maybe an intro. It looks like Eddie Ruan has joined. And Eddie, I, I don't know if we've met before. Maybe you could do a quick intro. Yeah, and I'm Eddie. I'm from the Fungible. So I was just uh, listening to see that. what the dash okay. would look like. I see a lot of uh, familiar names yeah. in this group <laughs> also. OK, OK, yeah. we have met. I'm sorry. I, your name looked familiar. And uh, but I couldn't pull it off the top of my head. So um, great. Thank you. And thanks for coming to the meeting. Thank you. So yeah, I appreciate it. Um, so everybody, that's all I have, unless you have anything else. Um, and um, so feel free to reach. I'll stop the recording. Feel free to reach out. Um, Freeze me at Microsoft.com if you need to email me. Um, I'll stop the recording and post it like normal. And I hope you have a good day. Thanks, Christina. All right. Thanks, everybody, yeah. for coming. Thank you.